Hi, my name is Mike Coleman. I'm a product manager for the Windows XP team at Microsoft. And what I'm going to show you today here is how Windows XP Professional is the preeminent operating system for the business user. Windows XP is the next release from Microsoft, and it's going to deliver performance, reliability, security, and ease of use in a new operating system designed to unleash the potential of the PC for the business user. So you'll have great experiences around uh, communications, help and support, and even mobility. So for the purposes of the demo today, what I'm going to show you is how I, as a knowledge worker, use Windows XP to do my job more easily and more effectively. I've been working on a presentation for our breakfast series here at work, and I've been collaborating with my coworker, Mark. So what I'm going to do in the demo is I'm actually going to find the document, uh, make a few changes, collaborate with Mark on that document, and then share the results with him. So let's go ahead and get started. As I move over here, I'm going to show you the new start menu in Windows XP. As you can see over here on the left, there are a list of about five applications. Those applications are the applications that I use the most frequently. So as I work, Windows XP will adapt to what I do. So these applications, as I use them, they populate the list. However, up here at the top, I have quick and easy access to the internet and my email. Those options are always available to me, and they're whatever application I use to perform those tasks. So if I use Lotus or Outlook Express for email, that's what would show up. If I use Netscape for my web browser, that's what would show up there. Over here on the right, these are key system areas that I need to get access to. And so I've got access to my documents, my computer, control panel, all of the key areas where I, where I manage my information and configure my machine. As I move up to my documents, I want to show you a couple of ways that Windows XP helps me get my job done uh, more easily. Now, we had a lot of functionality in Windows that was available via the right click. And so Folks, though, we were finding out wouldn't actually use the right click. A lot of times to do something like a rename, they would actually come up and go on the file menu and, and try to find where you would rename and they'd move through the menu structure. With Windows XP, in our user interface, we've added these task uh, areas. So as I select a file, you can see that the task area changes. If I select a folder, it changes again. And these task lists are there to expose key functionality to me and make it easy for me to get the things done that I need to do. Now, another problem that I have sometimes when I'm working with my machine is that I have a lot of information in the My Documents folder, and it's sometimes hard for me to find the documents that I'm looking for. So I'm working on this breakfast series presentation, and I obviously don't see anything in here very obvious that they indicate which uh, document I should be working on. So I can actually group my icons, and if I arrange them and show them in groups, now I have an alphabetical list. And I look down at the Bs, and I don't see anything there, and I, I, it just doesn't, be, it's not readily apparent to me the document I'm looking for. So let me try looking for my PowerPoint presentations. And I can do that by arranging the icons by type. So now I have my bitmap images, my compressed folders, and here's all my PowerPoint presentations. And again, as I look through there, I don't see the document I'm looking for. I think I have another way to find the document. Before I move on to that, I actually want to take a second and show you some of the other features that we've integrated into the shell here. The first is support for compressed folders. So if I take a folder here and I right click, I can extract the contents of that zip file or that compressed folder. Additionally, if I want to create a zip file or a compressed folder, I can select a number of documents and right click and say send to compressed folder. So it's super easy to create and extract uh, archives of, of compressed data, otherwise known as zip files. Another thing you can do, on machines equipped with CDR or CDRW drives, you can actually send documents to the CDR drive right there from the shell. And you can burn CDs uh, with your critical data right there in the operating system without the need for a third-party solution. I'll show you another feature that I kind of like in Windows XP. I'm going to move down here, and I'm going to go ahead and select a, a few of these documents. And we'll go ahead and open those up. And I want you to look down here on the taskbar. As you can see, the documents are opening. The buttons are getting smaller. Now, in previous versions of Windows, what would happen is those buttons would get so small that you couldn't read them. They would have like two or three letters. and You'd have no indication of what was actually behind that button. With Windows XP, we consolidate all of those, button, or all of those documents into a single button. And then with a single mouse click, I'm able to quickly and easily access the document that I'm looking for. And if I'm in a hurry and I need to shut everything down, I just right-click and choose Close Group. 
and all of those documents will close on their own. So it's very quick and very easy for me to open up multiple documents and manage them while still reducing clutter on my desktop and simplifying the way I work. So anyway, back to the document I was looking for. Windows XP has an enhanced search assistant in it that can help me find uh, all types of files, uh, either locally or information on the internet or in the help database, all kinds of different play, uh, sources uh, centralized in one spot on, the, on, on my computer. So I'm actually looking for a, a document. That's a PowerPoint document. I don't really remember when I worked on it last. I think the name is probably got Windows XP in it somewhere. And I'm pretty sure that I stored it in the My Documents folder. So I'll go ahead and click search. And again, I come up with those same documents. And none of those documents really jump out at me being, as being the one that I am looking for. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and search on some keywords. Now, I can actually look inside of the file. So when I know that the presentation I'm looking for relates to the breakfast series, so I'm going to go ahead and type that in. And Windows XP will go out and search. And now it has found a PowerPoint presentation with the words Windows XP in the title and the words breakfast series inside the document. It's a pretty good chance that that's my document. So we'll go down here. I can look at the title here in the preview pane. And it certainly is the document I'm looking for. So let's go ahead and fire that up. Make this a little bit bigger for you. And what I need to do is actually just insert a roadmap slide that uh, Brian had asked me to add or, or mark. And we'll go ahead and click that, double click it, and the roadmap slide is now added. I can save that off. Now, he had sent me an email earlier, so I'm going to go ahead and respond to the, his email. And when I open his email up, you can see that I get a, a notification at the top there that says, Mark Lee is online. Click here to send an instant message. The new Windows Messenger integrates with Office XP to notify me when my contacts are online. So rather than replying via email, I'm actually going to send Mark an instant message and tell him that I have the update that he needs. So over on the other PC there, you see the notification come up. And Mark's typing a message. So in some cases, instant messaging with text works really well. In other cases, you may actually want to do a, a voice and video chat. So I'm actually going to click the Start Camera button. And you'll see that Mark is getting an invitation on his screen asking if he wants to start the, the video conference. So we now have a video conversation going. And I'll just adjust my camera there. We have voice and video. Hey, Mark, how's it going? All right, how are you doing? I'm doing really well, thanks. I actually updated that PowerPoint presentation you were looking for. All right, sounds good. You want to email it to me? Actually, what we can do is we can actually use the uh, application sharing portion of Windows Messenger service to review it. So I'll just go ahead and send you a, an application sharing invitation. Okay. So I'll click File, Invite to start application sharing. And the two, com two machines will negotiate between the two to set up a connection. And as they do that, I can explain to you a little bit more about this technology. What it allows us to do is to share out an application on the desktop so both of us can look at it. And ultimately, either one of us can have control of it. So I'm going to go ahead and choose the PowerPoint presentation and share that out. And you can see now that Mark has a window on his desk that allows him to view the, the, the application on my machine. So this is the slide deck that I actually uh, updated for you. I just I inserted the slide as you requested. OK, uh, I think I just want to make one more change to it if I can. OK, sure. I'm going to click over here and allow Mark to take control of that window. And he will request control. I'll give it to him. So what are you doing there? I'm just going to add one more piece of text here. Just below Windows XP Professional, you left out the 64-bit edition. Ah, uh, sorry about that. No problem. Just add that in there. That'll be good. All right, that looks good. Yeah, it looks good. All right. I'll just release control to you. All right, so now I have control back, and I will go ahead and save that off. So it looks like that document's all done. Yeah, it's great. Why don't you uh, email it to me now? Actually, what I can do, rather than email it, so we'll just close down this remote, remote sharing dialog. I can go back into Messenger, and I can actually send the file to you over the Messenger service. So there's the file we're looking at. I'll click that, and Mark will get a notification on his machine. And he'll start the transfer. 
The file is going to transfer peer to peer. There's no need to attach an email. There's no need to copy it up to a server or any of that. We can just send it directly and work directly. So, hey, you know, thanks a lot for that. I'm glad we got that out of the way. I do have one more favor to ask you, though, before you disappear. Okay. I'm actually having some problems with my uh, uh, Outlook. I've heard that Outlook uh, in Windows XP can now support Hotmail. Do you know how to set that up? Yeah, no problem. All right, well, let me send you a remote assistance request. Let's accept that. All right. And what remote assistance is, is a new technology from Microsoft that's in Windows XP that allows IT professionals to support their customers uh, without visiting the desk. It also allows peers uh, to support each other, friends and family, coworkers. Um, additionally, we will ship this with a software development kit that allow corporations and ISVs, OEMs to integrate uh, this tool into their existing support infrastructure. So it's a tool for both uh, business help desks um, as well as, as the um, individual user. So you can see there that, that uh, Brian's actually, uh, Mark's actually got a version of my desktop up there. I'll minimize this. And uh, so go ahead, what do I need to do? Okay, well, I'll just take control here. Oh, okay. So with, with remote assistance, you can actually take full control of my machine. I have to actually give him permission to do that. Okay, and I'm just going to go into your Outlook here. Okay, notice that I can see exactly what's going on on my, my screen. So as he's doing these changes, I can actually see how that happens and how that works, and I can learn from this experience. Right, so you want to go into Mail Setup, Email Accounts, okay. and add a new email right. account. I can never find that. Right, and it's an HTTP account since it's a Hotmail account. All right. And we're going to put your name here, and your email address is Mike hotmail.com. Cool. And then we know your username is Mike. And then what's your password? You know, I'm pretty sure I can handle it from here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring up the help and support uh, toolbar here. And I'm going to click the stop control button. At any time during the session, I actually have the ability to put us back into a view only mode. So uh, if I was uncomfortable with what the support professional was doing or what, what Mark was doing on my machine, I could actually go ahead, stop control, and we're back into the view only mode, as noted up here in the status button. If I was really unhappy with what was going on, I could actually click the disconnect button. And that would actually shut the session down altogether. So with remote assistance, we make it super easy for you to get and give remote help, either from a, a friend or a peer or a help desk professional. And, and to secure the session, we allow you to optionally uh, secure it with a password. We make sure that the person receiving help confirms that request uh, by clicking the, the, the yes button. And all through the session, everything is request response. So when uh, Mark wanted to take control of my PC, he, I had to give him explicit permission. And then during the session, I was able to, at any time, stop his control of my machine or alternately end the session altogether. So that was really great. So thanks a lot, Mark, for that. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get out of here today, and I will uh, talk to you later on. Okay, see you later. So we'll go ahead and close that down. Now, I'm about done for the day, so what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to go ahead and, uh, say, uh, lock my workstation for the day, and I'm going to go ahead and head home. So uh, what I'm actually doing is I'm going to go ahead and move over here to Mark's computer, close that down, and this actually now represents my home PC. So now I'm on my machine at home, and this machine may be a Windows 98 box that we keep so the kids can play uh, some of their older games, or maybe it's a, a Windows XP box. The, the key there is it, it doesn't matter, because what we have in Windows XP is a piece of technology that can be run on any version of Windows and allow me to get back to my Windows XP professional box sitting in my office. So I can move to a coworker's machine down the hall, or I could move to my machine at my house, or even an internet kiosk at an airport. So I've got my machine name typed in there, I've got my username, and I click connect. And we'll get a virtual session going here. Type in my password. And there you see my desktop, just like I left it before I went home. If you click on the start button, you can see I have access to all my applications. If you click on my documents, you can see that I have access to all of the documents in my My Documents folder as well. The key to this technology is, first, this piece of code can run on any version of Windows, allowing you to access your desktop from virtually anywhere. 
Two, the code is optimized to work over lower speed networks. So if you're on a ISDN line or even a 56K modem, you can have a reasonable experience. Certainly, if you dial up over a 56K modem today, either from your home or an airport or a hotel, and you're trying to open a large PowerPoint presentation, that's going to take a long time. This technology will open those same documents in a fraction of the time. So actually, I, I just, you know, I, I, I've done the work I needed to do on my machine. I'm done for the day. And that really just sort of wraps up some of the key experiences I wanted to highlight for you, whether it be communications using the messenger service, whether it be uh, giving and getting remote support with remote assistance, or working, uh, revolutionizing the way mobile workers work with a technology like remote desktop. Windows XP is a, is a great win for all users in businesses of all sizes. I thank you for your time. If you need more information, please visit Microsoft.com slash Windows XP.